I've devoted the last 10 years of my life to an exploration of color. The artwork I make, whether I use paint, biofilms, or nanoparticles, challenges our ideas about color and asks us to ask fundamental questions about how we perceive the world. We tend to think of color as the icing on the cake. Often, we think of it much as we see it in this picture. Here, these boots, the color of these boots doesn't indicate any information about where they come from or what they're made of. Here, color is arbitrary, a matter of personal preference. Scientists, on the other hand, see color as intrinsically meaningful. Color gives them precise, quantifiable information about the subjects they study, allowing them to judge everything from temperature to chemical composition to whether stars are moving away or towards us. When I learned to make paint from oils and raw pigments, I came to understand color as being intimately linked to a substance's origins. Some pigments are crushed minerals, others are the burnt bones of animals, and others are colored dirt from different parts of the world. Though diverse, pigments have one thing in common. Their color is a result of what they're made of, and their relationship with light is simple. They absorb certain colors of light, and they reflect others. We see these reflected wavelengths as the object's color. The morpho butterfly taught me that an object's relationship with color can be much more complicated. Despite its brown pigmentation, the morpho appears as bright blue because these tiny structures on the right here manipulate light's path in and out of its wings. This sort of color is called structural color. It's color that results not from what something's made of, but how it's made. The morpho inspired me to seek out other forms of structural color, Specifically, structural color caused by nanoparticles. Now, it's nearly impossible to imagine how small these particles are. Smaller than bacteria, than cells in our body, even smaller than wavelengths of visible light. Now, this is key because when things become nearly as small as wavelengths themselves, their color is determined by their shape and size. These triangular silver nanoparticles here appear blue to the naked eye, whereas spherical particles made from the same substance appear yellow. I have a completely different relationship with color now, having learned to make nanoparticles in the Olivasados lab at UC Berkeley. These triangular silver nanoparticles look blues and greens when viewed from one angle, and muddy browns when viewed from the side. I now use these particles to make some of my art. Now, I no longer ask the question, what color is it? Instead, I ask, what relationship does it have with light? Near the turn of the 16th century, Leonardo da Vinci began asking similar questions. And it was his contemplation of the color blue that started him on this track. Scholars say that, at one point, Leonardo da Vinci thought that objects in the distant landscape looked blue because the air was made of blue substance. Over the years, he changed his mind. He noticed that smoke appeared blue when it passed in front of the black soot inside his fireplace. But when he went outside in the daylight and watched the same smoke rise against the sky, it looked brown. Leonardo's observations of smoke changed his understanding of why the sky is blue. No longer satisfied by the idea that the air is made of blue stuff, he reasoned that solar rays fell upon minute bits in the atmosphere. This is true. Air molecules in the sky scatter blue light more than any other color, making it our most familiar form of structural color. My artwork behaves similarly to the smoke Leonardo observed. This is a detail of artwork I make using a 19th-century process for making mirrors with silver. On the left, you see it with a dark background, and on the right, with a light background. 
These photographs show two views of a large piece I made for the Leonardo Museum using silver nanoparticles, like the smoke and the butterfly. The blue you see in the left image here is visible only from certain viewing angles. Shift your perspective, and you see that its color is dynamic. All the work I create with nanoparticles asks you to pay attention, to look a little longer, and to ask why you see what you see. More and more, I'm interested in making art that reveals itself slowly, and only after much looking. In making art that asks us to examine how our perception is dependent upon several relationships between our bodies and our environment, light and dark. Leonardo inspires me to practice the art of careful observation and to be able to navigate nimbly between things as large as a distant landscape and as small and ethereal as curls of smoke. Now that humans are able to discover and to shape the world on the nanoscale, these are just the skills we need. It's this that inspires me to make art that can prepare our minds, train our senses, and help us to be sensitive to our subtle, complex, and ever-changing world. Thank you.